Nephrops norvegicus, the Norway lobster or scampi. A valuable and plentiful resource in the fishing grounds around Scotland. But how many are there? And where are they? Usually, we get the answers to these questions from analysing commercial trawl catches. But that's a very imprecise method. And anyway, if fisheries develop rapidly, there isn't time to collect all the information we need. The flatten ground is a productive source of nephrops, where landings have increased from 1,000 to 4,000 tonnes in just a few years. Getting accurate, reliable data for such a resource was crucial. And that was the remit for the scientists at the Marine Laboratory in Aberdeen. They knew that using traditional trawl surveying techniques with a research vessel could produce misleading results because of the behaviour patterns of nephrops. They live in burrows and only come out occasionally to feed, so normal trawling would produce very random results with catch rates varying according to the time of day and other factors. So instead of trawling for the animals themselves, the researchers developed techniques using underwater television cameras to observe their burrows. They designed a sledge light enough to prevent it sinking into the sediment and with runners placed to allow the camera to film the seabed as it was towed along. It was deployed from the research vessel on a towing wire with television and control cables attached to it. Here, on Nephrop's grounds, the system operates at depths up to about 150 metres, but it's also been used successfully in deeper waters. The camera's towed at a speed of about half a knot, and each run lasts 10 minutes, covering areas of between 400 and 1,000 square metres. This is typical Nephrops territory, soft mud with some sand mixed in with it. It's relatively featureless, except for these holes in the surface of the sediment. They're the entrances used by the various types of burying animal which live here, including nephrops. Fortunately, most nephrops burrows are easy to spot. They have this characteristic crescent-shaped crater-like entrance which leads down at a gentle angle. There's often a pile of darker, recently worked spoil at the mouth of the burrow, and sometimes even footprints. Most nephrop systems have more than one entrance and resin casts have been made which make it easier to see how they're structured beneath the surface. There remains a problem that some systems will be empty and some will have more than one animal. Potential errors created by this are, however, relatively constant and are regarded as less of a problem than that associated with the counting of observed nephrops. These are subject to variable emergence patterns. When the speed of the sledge has settled, observers count the burrow systems crossed by a line drawn across the screen. The line represents a width of about one metre. To maximise the accuracy of the observations, the counting is done by teams. The British Geological Survey has identified a large, continuous offshore area of soft mud sediment to the east of Scotland. Part of this is the Flatten Ground which is an ideal habitat for nephrops, comparable in size to the Grampian region. To make sure that such a large area was properly covered, it was divided into a number of regions, and stations were placed randomly within each one. From their survey data, the Marine Laboratory's researchers drew up these diagrams, showing the wide distribution and varying densities of the nephrops population. On the basis of these findings, calculations could be made to estimate how many animals there were in each of the regions and the overall numbers. Now, by using trawl samples to check the size of the animals, the biomass of nephrops can be computed. The investigation suggested that in the flattened ground, there's probably more than 100,000 tons of nephrops. Compared with other areas, that's a very substantial biomass. In fact, several times bigger than those in other important Scottish grounds. Nephrop stocks in the North Sea are subject to TAC management, so these figures have particular significance for the decision makers. It seems that for this stock, there's scope for expansion at a time when other stocks are showing signs of overexploitation. This was a practical, reliable solution to a difficult problem. It's now been applied successfully in other areas of the North Sea, and stock estimates are also available for the Moray Firth and the Firth of Forth. 
and the work goes on. The researchers in Aberdeen are still developing and refining the approach to improve its precision and accuracy even further. In this vital industry, crucial decisions can only be made if the right information is available. This project is another demonstration of how the marine laboratory continues to service the needs of everyone connected with fishing Scotland's rich waters.